Welcome. Welcome everyone to another Wednesday night. The fundamentals to gain inner peace with your hosts, Coach Menachem Bernfeld. And tonight we're doing class number 53. And for all the past recordings, you can find on menachembernfeld.com. Top left, you get to start the journey if it's the first time you're here tonight. But uh, most of you have been here before, and we're on this journey together. So here we are. Before we continue tonight, I would like to ask just a basic awareness question. If you were with us last week, we did the breathing technique, the Vu sound. So just to stop for a minute and think, did I do it? Did I actually do it or I was too busy? And yes, we are too busy. We're running, there's so much going on. And we have a routine and we wake up in the morning, do we gotta do, go to work, come home and another day and another day, another week. And then a few weeks, uh, we're busy. So the question is to see, you know, especially if you're on the journey, with me together on this journey to be able to slow down, to find some time and to see if you're actually doing some steps, doing the work, what we're learning. Um, a, another concept that we learned is that many times part of an escape is looking for more knowledge. So today's days, there's so much going on. Um, there's a lot of classes out there online. You can be going from one class to another class, which is great. And you're getting more and more knowledge. But could you stop for a minute? And that might be hard. And that's another reason. Why is it so hard to stop? We discussed, and we're constantly in the fight and flight modes because it's not so easy to stop, to slow down. Some negativity can, can come up. So that's important, just to become aware. And I, I did get the feedback. Thank you very much for those who did do it. And um, yes, there were a few that did it and sent me the feedback. You can always send me feedback and questions at coachmanachem at gmail.com. So that's important to, to become aware. And again, if you didn't do it, you're not the only one. And it's the awareness of step number one to see how you work. You might be still running and it's hard to stop to start implementing these ideas. But eventually, don't be so harsh on yourself. So tonight, we're going to be discussing the four S's. The four S's in your life and it really comes from the four S's in your child's life, which is important for connection and the way your child grows up. But we're going to try to go back and forth, see how much we can connect, how much we need to do for our children, and how much we can do for ourselves now as an adult. Like we discussed many times, we all have inside of us that inner child, and all of these ideas that work for our kids now that we're older sometimes could be we didn't get it when we're younger so now's the time to be there as an adult be there for that inner child so we're going to go through the four s's which is safe seen soothed and secure but before we start before we go into the four s's let's Come into the room. Let's become aware of where we are. Make yourself comfortable. And take a deep breath. And why don't we practice the breathing technique that we did last week? So that for those who are very busy and would love to practice it, now is the time. So let's do the boo sound breathing technique. It's a basic technique. Don't overwork, don't overstress. Regular breathing. And it's just a slight deeper in when you breathe in, just a little bit deeper into your stomach. 
And then on the way out, you make the vu sound and you feel the vibration in your body. That's about it. Don't overdo it. It's very basic, but powerful. So here we go. We'll do five rounds and then we'll start. Take a deep breath in. And the way out, you say, boom, boom. Feel the vibration when you say the sound, boom. Again, another breath in. Two more. Beautiful. Become aware of where you feel the vibration. Shake it out. Maybe your shoulders, your legs, your stomach, whatever it is. And here you are. People tell me that they don't see what, you know, nothing, nothing is happening. And I, like I mentioned last week, somatic. Somatic work is the body. We live in our heads. We live with logic. And logically, we're doing great. We could all discuss things and explain things we understand. But the healing, much of our healing needs to be done in our body. That tr those triggers, when we get nervous, all of these feelings, the negative feelings are the body. You might say, why am I nervous? Everything's fine. What's the big deal? So logically, you might think, what's the big deal? But your body is maybe having a trigger, remembering things from when you were younger. And it feels the negative feeling. So the healing needs to be somatic through breathing, connecting with your body and stopping and becoming aware of how you feel. That's very important. Many people, this work is very hard. To stop for a few minutes is very hard because something inside of them is pushing them to do, continue, just continue, don't stop, don't stop. And when you start doing this practice to stop and breathe and become aware, you need to observe, observe your body what, and the thoughts. What are your thoughts and what, what's your body feeling? And don't react. You might say, go, you have to finish this. Don't do this now. People are looking, you know, you can't. All of these thoughts and reactions, those feelings, become aware of it. Start with a minute. After 60 seconds, you can go on but you're becoming aware. Eventually you do two minutes, five minutes, and slowly you slow down and you have some time for yourself. Not such a rush. Okay, so let's start. What's, what are the four S's? So like we mentioned, number one is feeling safe, seen, soothed, and secure. These are basically feelings, okay? Making kids feel this way, help them establish a healthy, healthy bonds, healthy relationships. And when they get older, it's much easier for them. They don't have to constantly be running. Soon we'll see what's, what are consequences when kids don't have it. But this is very important. So these four ideas to be seen, safe, seen, and to be able to soothe when they have those emotional negative feelings or whatever feeling they have, and to feel secure. So children who have their emotional and physical needs met and acknowledged, responded to the adult, whoever's there responds to these feelings, 
they tend to form a secure attachment. Otherwise, they may experience the challenges of insecure attachment. So let's discuss for a minute attachment theory. Attachment theory is basically, if you had a secure and safe relationship, so, you know, when you were younger with the adults in the room, your parents, you tend to form secure relationships with everyone else. You know how to do it. You're not scared. You understand. It makes sense. But if on the other hand, somebody who had some challenges with their caregivers when they were younger, they're not, they, for some reason, they weren't reliable. They did not attend appropriately to your needs when you were younger, then you might tend to establish anxious or avoidant relationships as an adult. Anxious and avoidant. So here are some ideas, what people feel, and sometimes it could be coming from having, when you were younger, you weren't, uh, you didn't have all of these things. You weren't, didn't feel seen, didn't feel secure. So, Different ideas. One of them is people feel disorganized. They're all over the place. Or anxious for some reason. And you're not sure why. Avoidant. There are certain things they try to avoid. Uh, lack of self-esteem. Um, just if you make sure that you're muted, please. Thank you very much. Um, what else? Lack of trust. So automatically, when you have these things, you have, you, you have a, it's a challenge relationship with other people. If you have a lack of trust and the anxious try to avoid, so just becoming aware of when somebody's missing these things. It's hard when you grow up, any relationship, whether it's a spouse, your own kids, at work. Some people have a fear of abandonment. Um, people have a hard time making decisions, knowing what they want. They rely on others for approval, always to see if other people approve and they don't feel comfortable with their own decisions, with their own ideas. Sometimes it's hard to let go if you have a certain relationship and it's not working the way it should, whether it's at work. And it's hard for you to let go because who am I without it? I need those relationships. You have to connect to it. And Another, th a very important thing is you neglect your basic needs, like we discussed many times, just to be able to take care of yourself, self-care. All of these things can come up. The way I see it is really not being in touch with yourself. And the reason why is because if you are in touch with yourself, there is no self. I don't know, I'm not sure. Who am I? What do I want? I'm, I'm nothing without what I have. I can't let go of this job because this is who I am. If I don't have this job, then I'm, I'm going to be a zero. I feel worthless. So all of these things, you want to stay where you are. It's hard to take risks, hard to take, do new things because there's no healthy sense of self. And that could be coming from very, very young years, from experiences that we picked up. So yes, these things are very important to be able to give it to your kids. But let's discuss how we can give it to ourselves now. It's never too late. And whatever you're feeling, you, if you can become aware, if you're here with us tonight, that means slowly you're talking about it. You're becoming aware of where you would like to see some healing. For some reason, you feel anxious or you have a hard time making decisions or whatever it is. Once you become aware, you can decide 
to do different. You can decide to say, let me try. Let me make, let me make this decision and let's see what happens. Basically what happens is that you, the adult, are there for that inner child. So instead of that inner child controlling your life, which if you're not aware, then that's what's happening. You wouldn't try that new thing because you have that fear. Who has the fear? It's that child inside of you. And he doesn't have the support of any adult. So he needs support, whether it's an adult, somebody else, or you as the adult to be able to be there. For yourself. So if you become aware, it's not too late. If you do see that these things um, are in the way of the relationship with your kids, um, these four S's, they are from, the author's name is Daniel Siegel. And basically this is the book. Um, Shimon Russell speaks about it very often. The book is called Parenting from the Inside Out. Basically the whole book is that sometimes we think it's our kids or the people around us that they need to change. But if you're working from the inside out, you start to realize that it's something inside of us, how we react, what buttons it presses. And an important thing that he writes is that don't think that if for some reason you grew up with these um, lacking, these four S's, that doesn't mean that it's too late. So you can always, with the awareness, start to reparent. Be there for yourself. Be there for that inner child. So it's not too late. So whether looking back or seeing how you feel or looking how what's going on in your, your home with your own kids, let's start with the first thing, safe. So basically what Siegel writes about being safe. So here he has, parents have two primary jobs when it comes to keeping kids safe and making them feel safe. So number one, protect them from harm. Basic harm, just make sure they're, they're physically safe. And number two, to avoid becoming a source of fear and threat. So, you're talking about for you know when when parents or in schools when they used to hit. You know today it's maybe a little bit less, but some people grew up with that fear. Of, you never know if a parent might lose it. You did something wrong. So that's there's a constant feeling, of not feeling safe. Stepping on eggshells. Who knows what's going to happen? I better behave. And from the outside, it looks beautiful because the kid is behaving. But they don't feel safe. That's, that could be physically. If there's physical, physically, you know, if the parent hits, so that's feeling safe physically. But even if they're screaming and whatever you do is wrong, and if you don't do perfect, and it's this constant do this, do that, there's no place of relaxing of just being, of calming down. Think about what we discuss over here. People are in fight and flights, always busy doing things, even though it's productive, but they're always, they can't stop. That, that child in that house also can't stop. They can't just sit down and relax because who knows what's gonna happen. And if that's how we grow up, so when we're older, we could keep on going that way. We feel, we could feel these messages that we got worthless or we're not good, whatever it is. And when we get older, we need to continue with the routine, continue doing what we do. Because if I let go, if I stop, if things, if, if there's any change, if I want to get, go out of my comfort zone, it's too scary. So who's the one that's scared? That's that inner child inside of us saying, just stay where you are. Keep on going. Don't stop. Don't try new things. So basically, it's screaming for help. So us and adults, how do we help a child, whether it's a child or our inner child? So here are some strategies for to feel safe. So first, 
do no harm. And that, he writes over here, make a commitment that you won't be the source of fear in your home. It could be hard for people who weren't aware till now. Make that commitment. I cannot be the one, that source of fear. Now the question is, we're not perfect and these things happen. And what should we do? So the next thing is repair, repair, repair. When there's a breach in your relationship with your child, you have to reconnect as soon as possible and apologize if necessary to sit down and say, that was a mistake. The way I reacted wasn't right. You know, it got me very mad, whatever it happened. Again, this, this could be very hard. Let's first listen to the concept and then slowly see where we can bring it in. But it's important because we're not perfect. And these things happen. I sometimes do something wrong. You might say something wrong, but say that was a mistake. And to be able to apologize and reconnect. Help your kids feel snug in a safe harbor. Create within your home and overall environment, safety, and well-being. So think for a moment, a moment for whether yourself, where you are, do you have a place where you can just relax, feel cozy, some music in the background, you know, just sitting on your couch. Is it a cozy place? Do you feel comfortable? Do you feel relaxed? Or do you feel threatened? Do you feel people are looking saying, why don't you get things done? Why are you stopping? Continue. Wow, that could be hard. If you can never stop and just feel safe to relax, to take it easy, just to be, that could be a hard one. And when you have kids at home, think other times in the house where kids are just, just being, sitting and relaxing and having a good time, whatever it is. And if not, start to create such a space. Doesn't mean that you have to have, always have to be that way. Yes, they could have things they need to do to help in the house, which is great, which is amazing. But sometimes they can just take it easy and relax. My kids would love to hear this. They can just take it easy and relax. But yeah, that doesn't mean you're taking it easy and relaxing all day. It's just okay to have that space. So that's number one, to feel safe. The second one is to feel seen. Now seen is a feeling, not just to look at them. It goes much deeper. Truly seeing our kids is about three main things. Number one, attuning to their internal mental states on a profound and meaningful level. To really connect, to see where they are. Put yourself in their shoes. And that could be hard because we see it from our eyes. But if you can stop, and just look at them, imagine where are they? So that's number one, to be able to connect with their mental states. Number two is coming to understand their inner life. What are they experiencing? What are their stories? And number three is responding to what we see in a timely and effective manner. If they need something, we're there. So if you do this, that's when they feel they feel felt, they, they feel that feeling of, it's not just looking at them, seeing doesn't mean just looking at them. They feel that somebody's there. And being able to connect when they do share, listen, you really wanna know what's going on and how they are living in their world. You have to listen. If you can listen, then when they share, you hear what they're feeling, what they're experiencing, and not to shut it down, even though we might think it's silly or it's wrong, it shouldn't be that way. That's not the right way to think. Stop. Don't guide them now. Just listen. Try to see what, you know, be curious. What is their life all about? Let me hear. And by sitting there quietly, being able to hear. Now, this is something that you can do with yourself too. Many people are not aware of hearing their thoughts. We discussed it in the past, but this is what happens when you sit for a few minutes doing nothing. Close your phone, don't open a book, just sit down and you will hear what's going on in your life. 
think I'm so overwhelmed. There's so much going on. I don't know. I don't want to go there. I don't want to do that. I have to do this. It's 10 days late. All of that. Listen, you become aware of how you feel. How you can connect to your world. And then after that, we can help them out. So let's go to number three. It's to be able to soothe. When a child's in a state of internal distress, whatever's going on, they're in a panic. That negative experience can be shifted by an interaction with a caregiver who attunes to and cares for her. She might still suffer, but at least she won't be alone in her pain. So if they're crying, don't tell them to stop. Just sit there for a few minutes. You know, it might be hard. But to be able to say what's going on. And if they can't talk because they're too much, you know, they're overwhelmed. So just sit there for a few minutes and wait until they can talk. And then later on, you can maybe give them ideas. But it, the first step, you can't look away from the first step to be able to be there no matter what. And the, the author calls it connect and, and direct. To be able to direct them how to feel, to help them when they're overwhelmed, you first have to connect. And connecting is with being there, not trying to change anything. Um, a good idea for this is to be able to build a toolbox, a toolkit. It's an internal toolkit. And a time when you can talk to them, not when they're overwhelmed, not when they're throwing a trauma, um, when they're screaming and yelling, but when they're calm. Before emotional situations arise, work with your child to develop simple tools and strategies to help them calm. Whether it's a place in the house, sometimes they can take a bath, <clears throat> whatever it is, or they can do some breathing if they like it, if it works for them. Something that they can do so that when it happens, they can, you know, slowly go back and do those things. Offer your peace. Peace, P-E-A-C-E. -E. When your kids are upset, give them your presence. That's the P. Engagement, affection, calm, and empathy. And well, all of these, so, you know, we can discuss it. But it's basically you being able to be there for that child or you being able to be there for that inner child when it feels in a, it has a bad, a bad day, low moment, it's not feeling good, it has all these negative thoughts going on, things that it's not working out, whatever it is, you as the adult, be there. And for that, you have to disconnect, to be able to see that you are not your thoughts. And when you hear the thoughts, you can still sit there and wait. And just be there, just like you're there for your child, you're there for, you're there for yourself. So <clears throat> this is basically the idea of the safe scene and suits. If you can do these things, and then the result is the fourth one, which is secure. The child has a place where they feel secure about themselves. They feel secure no matter what's going on. There's ups and downs. Everybody has ups and downs. But if you, if you give them these four S's, safe, seen, soothes, then they, they automatically feel secure. And again, let's not forget that it's never too late. And we can always start today becoming aware. And slowly, slowly there is change. Again, don't try to be perfect. And if you've seen in the past, and you think you've messed up in the past, it's never too late. And every time you're there for your child, every time you're there for yourself, what happens is you build. You build a relationship. You build the relationship, that, that trust fund. So you can be there. Every time you're there, slowly, the relationship you know, enhances the relationship. They feel that you're there for them, even though it's not perfect, not every time. But eventually they learn and they learn how to connect and it helps them when they grow up. And the most important thing is that to remember we have it inside of us, that inner child, to reparent that inner child. We are the adult 
and we should be there for that younger child, hold their hands, be there with their ups and downs, help them out. Don't tell them they're wrong. Don't tell them they shouldn't feel that way. Validation, whatever they feel, they feel, and be there. So that's it for tonight. I'll take two minutes. For those who have questions, you can put them in the chat or you can ask live, whatever, feel more comfortable. Thank you for the feedback for those who have practiced the Vu sound. Thank you so much. Thank you for guiding us in this process and for your patience, understanding, and kindness. We're all on this journey together. And we all need some understanding and kindness wherever we go. Thank you for that feedback. Does it have to be only that VU sound? I'm not sure. I think the main thing is that the vibration in the body like you can become aware of where you feel it. Sometimes I feel it in my head, sometimes in my feet, just by saying "vu" and letting the body vibrate. It can let, it lets the body relax. Like I mentioned many times, you could be sitting on the couch and you're, it looks like you're relaxing, but your mind is racing. And what happens when your mind races, your body is tense. You don't always, um, you know, you're not always aware of it, but when you do some deep breathing and you relax your shoulders and you see the difference that it makes, you realize that all day you were standing like this. And now when you take some time, your shoulders can you know, fall and relax, take it easy. So even if you're sitting on the couch and it looks like you're relaxing, which is good, it's a step, but if your mind is racing, your body is tense. So we need to slow down our minds. And how do you do that? We had a class on that. The first step is to just become aware of that racing mind. To see the thoughts going back. Don't start it, don't try to slow it down. Because that creates more anxiety. I have to slow down my mind. It's racing. I have to slow it down. It's not slowing down. You don't have to slow it down. Just look at it. Just hear it. Smile. Sit down for two minutes, observe your thoughts, and see them going back and forth. We did that um, guided meditation with putting your thoughts on the leaves and let it go down the river. Another thought comes to your head, put it on the leaf and let it go down the river. Or the clouds, put it on the cloud, let it go. But just become aware, don't try to do anything. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining. Thank yourself for being here. Thank yourself for doing the work, for giving yourself some space to be able to be, to heal, which we all need. And I'll see you in Metz Hashem next week, Wednesday night, same time, nine o'clock in Metz Hashem. Have a good night and a good week.